Setting up Hyperledger Fabric in Kubernetes. I am the author of multiple courses on Hyperledger Fabric. Please check out the link in description to get details on my courses. In this video, I'll demonstrate to you how you can set up Hyperledger Fabric network in a Kubernetes cluster. For demo purposes, I'm going to use Google Kubernetes Engine. Please note that I've put together this video using parts of lectures from my course, Hyperledger Fabric Network Design and Setup, which provides the guidance for setting up Hyperledger Fabric Network using a native mode, Docker, Kubernetes, and it'll teach you everything that you need to know to set up live Hyperledger Fabric based networks. You can get more information about it at bcmentors.com. Please note that this video will not teach you Kubernetes or Google Kubernetes engine. You must have basic understanding of Kubernetes and Docker. I will be referring to a repository in GitHub. This is the link to the repository. Please go ahead and open it in a browser window. As I'll go through the video, I'll refer to the various files available in this repo. I've divided this video in three parts. In part one, we'll go over the Fabric Network's setup requirements. In part two, I'll show you the steps that you need to carry out in order to set up Fabric on Google Kubernetes Engine. In part three, we will test the Fabric network on Google Kubernetes Engine. Let's start with part one, the setup requirements. Our Fabric network will have two member organizations, Acme and Budget. Acme organization will host an order of type solo and it will also host one anchor peer. The budget organization will host just one peer. There will be one application channel and both the Acme peer and the budget peer will join this channel to transact using chain codes. Let's go over the fabric set of requirements on Kubernetes. The peer and the order are created as containers in the Kubernetes pods. If the pod is restarted, it should not impact the ledger and the state data managed on the persistent store. In other words, the file system on which the peer and order are writing the data should not be lost as a result of the pod restart. In case of a pod failure, the peer and order should automatically get restarted in a new pod. The peer and the order IP addresses should be exposed outside the cluster so that they can participate in the gossip network. Next, I'll go through the various Kubernetes features that may be used for implementing Fabric on Kubernetes for these requirements. The simplest way to create the peer and the order instances in the Kubernetes cluster would be to define them as pods. The container in the pod will be for the peer or the order instance and the peer and the order container will use the container file system for writing out the ledger and the state data. Now let's see if our requirements are met. The first requirement is that the peer and order are launched as pods that is met. But the second requirement that the pod restart should not impact the ledger and the state database is not met because when the pod gets restarted, the container gets restarted too. And when the container gets restarted, the file system associated with the container is lost. The third requirement is that the peer and the order should get automatically restarted. Pods do not get restarted automatically. So this requirement is not met. The last requirement for exposing the peer and the order IP is met by way of defining Kubernetes services. So that is doable. Now let's discuss if we can define the peer and the order in a replica set. Now in the replica set also, the peer and order will be launched in pods as containers. So that part is good. Now the storage is still temporary or ephemeral. So our second requirement is not met. With the replica sets, if there is a failure on the pod, then the replica set restarts the pod. As a result, our third requirement is met and fourth requirement can be met with the Kubernetes services. So what that tells us is that since not all of our requirements are met, we cannot use the replica set controller for defining the peer and the order setup. The peer and the order may be defined as stateful sets. In the case of stateful sets, the containers are still launched in the pod. So our first requirement is met. The container can use persistent volumes for data storage and these persistent volumes are outside the containers. So what that means is that when the container is restarted or the pod is restarted, it does not impact the data stored in the persistent volume 
and when the container restarts it connects back to the persistent volume and continues to use the data on the persistent volume so our second requirement is met with the stateful set stateful sets also restart the pod in case of a failure so our third requirement is met and the fourth requirement can be met with kubernetes services with the stateful set we can meet all of our requirements for setting up fabric on kubernetes the sample network that we will create in kubernetes will consist of three stateful sets one for the acme order one for acme peer and one for budget peer each of these stateful set pods will have associated persistent volumes that they will use for managing the ledger and the state data in the repository you will find multiple kubernetes definition yaml files let's take a look at the order yaml file in the order yaml file you will find that the kind is set to stateful set and here is the image that will be pulled from dockerhub.com which is the public docker images registry don't worry about this image you'll learn about it in a couple of minutes here we are setting up the containers environment you see this where slash hyperledger slash config this is the folder on the image where i have the order dot yaml available to the order binary and this is where the persistent volume is getting mounted and the order writes the ledger and the state data to this folder the acme peer and the budget peer definition files are very similar to the order yaml files this one is the acme peer yaml file you will find that the kind is stateful set here is the image hlf dash acme dash peer and these are the environment variables which are used by the peer binary and this is the volume mount for the persistent volume where the ledger and the state data is managed by the peer the storage class is defined in a yaml file under the gcp subfolder you will find this file that uses the gce-pd as the provisioner this will be the persistent storage disk that will be created on the google cloud i suggest that you go through these yaml files on your own and let me know if you have any question let's go to part 2 this is where the rubber will meet the road we will set up fabric on gke let's go over the activities that we will carry out in this part the first thing we'll need to do is set up the docker images using the docker client and then push those images to docker hub registry then we need to provision the cluster for kubernetes on google cloud after that we will use the kubectl in the command shell to set up our pods at runtime these pods will be created by the kubernetes cluster by pulling in images from the docker hub registry once the pods are up and running we will log into the peer containers and create the channel and join the two peers to the application channel please note that the setup instructions and the commands i have used in this video are available in the readme.md file under the subfolder gcp to set up the images we first need to set up the docker file then execute the docker build command to create the image locally and then use the docker push command to push the image to the docker hub registry we have to do this for three images one for the acme order one for the acme peer and another one for the budget peer the docker files are available under the images subfolder here is the docker file for acme peer let's go through it please note that in this image i will be copying the crypto material and the configuration objects from my local file system into the image here i'm copying the crypto material that will be used by the peer next i'm creating folder with the name config where i'm copying all of the configuration objects after that i'm copying the core.yaml file from my local folder to the config folder in the image after that copying some utility scripts copying some test chain code setting up the environment so that we can execute peer commands from the command prompt within the peer containers and then executing the peer node start command please go through the rest of the docker files on your own the good news is that i've already created the images so we don't have to recreate the images here you may check out the images at hub.docker.com slash u slash a cloud fan and these are the three images that are in use from the kubernetes yaml file 
As a next step, we will set up the Kubernetes cluster on Google Cloud. I'll be creating a Kubernetes cluster in an existing project. So click on the hamburger menu and select Kubernetes engines clusters. Create a new cluster. I'll name the cluster as fabric cluster. It's a standard cluster. Select the zone, keep everything default and hit create. Cluster creation will take a minute or two. Once it's ready, we'll get to the next step. Now that our cluster is launched, we are ready to move to the next step, which is to use kubectl for launching peers and the order in the Kubernetes cluster. We will execute the kubectl commands in the cloud shell. So click on connect and run in cloud shell. Hit enter, validated by executing kubectl get all. And we are connected to the cluster. As a next step, we are going to set up our repository locally in the cloud shell. And to do that, copy the link, come back to the shell and just do git clone and control V to paste the Git link. Now let's launch the code editor. Here is the folder with repository files. So what I'm going to do is cd to hlf k8s cloud. And here, first we are going to create the storage class by applying this file. So cd to gcp kubectl apply dash f dot. And as a next step, we're going to apply these three files to create the order and the peers. So kubectl apply dash f dot. Let's go back to the dashboard and click on workloads. And as you can see here, the three pods are pending. Give it a minute or so. It took roughly a minute for the pods to start running. As a next step, we are going to connect to the peer, create the application channel, and then join the two peers to the application channel. Log into the ECMA peer container. Now you, here in this landing folder, you will find that there are multiple scripts. These are utility scripts, which are using the peer binary. You can go through the content in these scripts by simply doing a cat on these files. I suggest that you go through these scripts on your own. Let's go ahead and execute the script submit channel create. This will create the application channel and we have received block zero which indicates that the channel creation was successful. As a next step we need to join the channel. So I'll use join-channel.sh the ACME peer has successfully joined the application channel now. And to validate if the peer has joined the channel or not, we can execute the command peer channel list. And as we can see here, the ACME peer has joined airline channel. As a next step, we need to update the anchor peer. So execute anchor-update.sh. And now our anchor peer is set up. So we exit out. And now we have to set up the budget peer. And to do that, log into the container for the budget peer. Fetch genesis block for the application channel by executing fetch-channel-block.sh. And now we are ready to join the channel. So we are going to execute join-channel.sh. And this will join the budget peer to the channel. Let's check here channel list and as expected a peer has joined the channel. At this point our fabric network is set up on Kubernetes. In this last part we will test the fabric network on Kubernetes by executing chain code. To make things easier for you click on the readme file and you will find all of the instructions that I have used till now and here are the instructions for validating the network. You can simply copy and paste the commands to the command shell. Here I am Logging into the ACME container, let's go ahead and install by executing cc-test.sh install. Instantiate the chain code and we are doing this on ACME peer container. Instantiation may take a minute or so, so please be patient. Instantiation is successful, so let's go ahead and carry out a query. cc-test dot sh query. And you see the value of a and b from the chain code. So what we're going to do next is execute invoke and change the value of a and b. Now, next time when we will check the value of a and b, it should have changed. So query and as expected, we see a changed value because of the invoke transaction. Now, what you can do is follow the instructions here to test out the same chain code in the budget and you should see the same values reflected for a and b in both ACME and the budget peer. I'll leave that to you as an exercise. I hope you found this video useful. Please don't forget to check out my courses on Hyperledger Fabric. The link to the courses and discount coupons is in the description. Thank you.